Greg got an email from a company called Innovative Eyewear, correct? Uh, a gentleman's name is Harrison Gross. They said, you gotta talk to the CEO of this company. And we thought, so I vetted them, I looked at their company, a real company, great business model, great management team, and we were able to get um, uh, Harrison Gross, the CEO and co-founder of Innovative Eyewear, their stock symbol L-U-C-Y, uh, which is Lucy, and we have him here via Zoom. Hey man, how are you, good to see you. Hey, thanks so much for having me. I love the fact that you, like you look like you're in Menlo Park. He's about 18 years old. <laughs> He's, he's a venture guy. Hey, can you tell me, um, you guys you guys are in the business of what you call smart eyewear, correct? Um, exactly right. Yeah. So, so for example, I have um, reading glasses. With that, with, this is not smart eyewear. This is just because I'm a taco shy of 80 years old and mm -hmm. I, need, I need reading glasses. What is smart eyewear? When we say smart eyewear, we're broadly talking about smart glasses and other uh, electronics in an eyewear form factor. Um, so essentially eyeglasses, sunglasses, reading glasses, uh, they're enhanced with some form of technology. In the case of our company, that's Bluetooth audio. Um, so our glasses are essentially AirPods and glasses in one. Uh, it's a really convenient product, allows you to, uh, you take phone calls from your glasses, you can listen to music, you can uh, listen to podcasts, you can create podcasts on the glasses. And uh, recently we introduced an app that lets you speak to ChatGPT uh, on our glasses. Have you so have you ever have you ever designed some glasses while you were listening to a podcast about your glasses in the studio while you're working on some glasses? <laughs> you go back. No, and but we do envision a future where people will create, share, monetize, and enjoy different types of content on glasses, and that's the future that we're trying to help create. So I, I remember Oakley. Remember Oakley? Yeah. Mike has some fakeleys. We came from uh, the swap meet. Still wear them. But um, I remember Oakley had this pair of glasses that had. Remember that you mentioned AirPods or iPod or whatever, and they, they had a little thing on the end of them, and they plugged in your ears while you walked around. We're not talking about that, are we? We're talking about within the glasses themselves. You got a little microphone. Yeah. It, it looks like it's just a pair of glasses, correct? Yeah, it looks just like a normal pair of glasses. If I didn't tell you it was smart glasses, you wouldn't know. Um, that's a big part of our USP. Because uh, people like eyewear that looks and feels fashionable, looks good. Um, people don't want to wear uh, geeky glasses that have earbuds coming out of the temple like those old Oakleys. But that was a really <laughs> cool product because that was like a concept car for smart eyewear. You know, it was a very early product, showed what was possible in the space, just like Google Glass did, really kind of opened up um, the box in terms of what a pair of glasses can actually be uh, and showed a lot of us, you know, what, what, what the future of eyewear can hold. So, um, here, so this is actually two very important products. Okay, uh, so when if when you're saying I can view something within the glass itself, is it like a little window? Is it one lens? Is it both lenses? No, it's like, it's like the back of the oh, comic no, book. No, no. Our glasses are just audio, so we're we're going for a very like simple product model where okay. it's, it's very easy to use, mass market, ubiquitous use cases. Um, so we're all about just introducing these Bluetooth audio features okay. and. Uh, voice access to AIs like Siri and ChatGPT on your glasses. Here's what concerns me, and by the way, fantastic product, and I, by the way, uh, fully dis full disclosure, I bought some Ray-Bans about three years ago that it seemed I could take a picture, I could, I could video you as I'm walking behind you at the mall, not creepy at all. Um, sure. <laughs> and then I, but, it was, but it was, the, the problem I had was, um, they, they, I think they were half-baked at the time. And what I, I love to see is that you have sort of prioritized uh, the, the speaking, talking, and hearing versus videoing. But here's my question: How many times do you see some guy walking through the uh, walking through the uh, the aisles of the grocery store? You know, yeah, I'll take uh, two pounds of salmon. I paid that, yeah, and totally. the guy's talking to himself out there. Is there any etiquette involved? Is there any tips when you're walking around and you're doing? And you're a CEO of a public company. I mean, you're moving and shaking. Mm -hmm. When you're out there talking, does I mean, do you get the people talking to themselves? Like, <laughs> hey, Greg, Sully, how? They always, you talk, always a little louder. Oh, yeah. Hi, how are you? I'll take five pounds of salmon. Hey, hi, how are you, Greg? Uh, no, I have a, le a herpetic lesion on my heel. I have no idea where I got it. I got to call the doctor. How do you get through, is, give us some tips on that. Well, I think, you know, some people do like a one of these, you know, and that, that's how people kind of know, oh, okay, there's something going on in their ear. Um, just so people know you're not crazy. But you know, it's interesting, our first models actually had the Bluetooth blue light on the outside. Um, but our customers wanted us to get rid of that. They wanted them to really look exactly like a normal pair of glasses and be discreet as possible. So that's what we went with. So, so as far as the, the glass is concerned, I can see the safety features of completely hands-free, like when you're in the car and, and, and things like right. that. Is that one of the points you tout with the company? There's actually a couple of key safety features. One, um, since the speakers are open ear and they're not going directly into your ear canal, um, they're actually safer than in-ear headphones uh, over time, because in-ear headphones can cause advanced hearing loss, especially if you use them at a loud volume, just because they're so close to your inner ear. 
Um, another key aspect, like you mentioned, is the awareness factor. So this open ear audio allows me to uh, have a conversation, hear the traffic around me if mm -hmm. I'm on a bicycle or running, uh, and just have a generally higher level of awareness than I would have if I was listening to music on traditional headphones. So that is a key um, uh, aspect of the product that we like to promote. Uh, and there's also a lot of really useful accessibility features just for people that have mobility issues and uh, otherwise have a hard, maybe a hard time using a phone. Um, our glasses can open up a lot of new functionalities for them uh, in a more seamless fashion. Oh. Do, you know, do you know it's a hard time to use their phone? Mm. My mom. Mm -hmm. He you know, it's not, it, hey Bob, it's not, it, I, it, my phone doesn't ring, I'm going to Apple, I have things like, your mom, there's a little switch on the side. Yeah. Yeah, I'm trying to explain to your mom, there's, your 85 year old mom, there's a switch on the side of the iPhone that you can just flip it and it starts ringing. No, I'm going to Apple, you got a three hour appointment. <laughs> Harrison, when, when I'm thinking about with baseball playoffs going on, it made me think about how a lot of baseball players wear sunglasses during their, especially obviously day games. How would that become a risky type of product where they might be hearing things in their ear about certain pitches that are... Uh, that would be a good thing, wouldn't it? Well, I'm just thinking That's about fantastic. the cheating. I mean, is this going to be a whole new realm oh, that cheap, the umpires yes. are going to have to be, you know, they check for sticky stuff on the hands. Are they now sure. going to have to be well, checking I thought they were holding sunglasses. hands for the each inning. Are you wearing Harrison's glasses? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you know, some people bring up that issue and like, oh, you know, will kids use these when they're taking a test? Um, you know, I think there's fantastic. just... Fantastic. It's just... There are certain things, when any new technology is introduced, you know, there, there are certain things that have to be taken into consideration like that. But I think overall, the, um, the benefits of this product really speak for themselves. Uh, once you own these glasses, you no longer need to own a single pair of headphones. You don't have to worry about losing them or, you know, breaking them. It's actually a really maligned product category. How, um, how, how many how many how many models do you have, Harrison? Uh, is there? Uh, we're actually just launched six more. So we're at 21 styles. We have everything from something that would fit like a 15 year old kid all the way up to um, big ass melon head. Big ass melon head, <laughs> which is you know, it's so funny. Uh, Mike's middle name is Mike. Big ass melon head. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, Alice, do you wear do you do you walk around uh, when you're in public with glasses on with a straight uh, RBF face uh, so nobody so so as to not so no one approaches me. Yeah. Do you, would you wear these glasses to? I would, but I'm curious about the music aspect. If you're listening to your music and it's not in your ear, does that mean everybody around you can hear your music? Yeah, I'm, we're more worried about, you know, what if your significant other is yelling at you because you're supposed to be uh, at work, but you're, you're hearing the things like, whoosh, you're. Oh, well, generally nobody else can hear it. Um, if you're playing it at max volume and there's someone right next to you and you're in a really quiet environment, um, like sitting next to him in the car with no music playing, uh, then it'll just sound like you're playing headphones real loud. Yeah, they walk by um, Alice and the they say- the vast majority of environments, uh, I love nobody that. else can hear the glasses. They walk by Alice and they say, I love that song, Show Me Your Feet, because uh, they heard that she's walking by, because she's listening to that. Hey, listen, what's next for you guys? Uh, obviously, oh. um, is yeah. there a hurdle to mass market adoption of this thing? Because I think this is ripe for, for adoption. Yeah, there have been a couple, but you know, we've really addressed them one by one. Um, the first thing is, you know, the, they have to be lightweight and comfortable. People really need to be able to wear them as a regular pair of glasses for 16 hours. Um, so that was the, really the big one that we had to solve. Because um, like, you know, those Oakleys you mentioned and a lot of other early smart eyewear, it was just too bulky to wear all day or to wear, and they couldn't be worn with prescription in most cases. Um, so we do deliver them with prescription as well. That's another key um, uh, adoption hurdle that we've addressed. And we we're actually, we're the first company ever to uh, ship prescription fitted smart glasses directly to consumer. They well done. Can we, can we have you back? I want to explore the industry. Yeah. You, are, you have your glasses yet? Brand ambassador. You have, so you, how do you like? You're, 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 you're very close to where you're going to have your arms going to have to be like seven feet longer yeah, in the menu. I think I need to get them. And it, it goes from like there. one day to the next. Like your final said, eh. All right. Harrison, gross. The name of the company is Innovator Eyewear, stock name Lucy, L-U-C-Y, as in Mike Morrill, David Billings.